Hi, this is Marie Louise. Sorry, I'm late. Today I'm going to interview Barbara Lubig, who's a filmmaker and a historian from Italy. And she's one of the people who started this great place, Centralwerk. We're going to talk about the place and its history. So, how did it all start with Centralwerk? Okay. 2013, we discovered this place. Um, we were an association, a group of people called, working in the cultural field, um, musicians, uh, dancers, um, uh, sociologists, uh, filmmakers, philosophers, architects, this kind of people. And um, finally, we discovered this place, which is 7,000 square meters. And it was uh, between 2014 and 2016, we refurbished. And now there are 23 flats, 66 ateliers for the artists. There's a radio station, a dance school. There's a, um, even a Zen meditation center. And all in all, how many people are involved in all that? We started like... 12 people and uh, then we were 40 people in the cooperative and now there are 100 people coming in and out in this um, Zentralwerk and working and living here. Can you talk about the history of the place? I heard it was a factory for sewing machines and in the 1930s another company moved in. It used to produce um, cameras. But during the, the time of uh, economical crisis in the 20s, they had to find a new way of make money, of making money, and um, started to produce weapons because there was this time of militarization. And uh, in fact, uh, size econ uh, situation, economical situation became better and better in in those years. And in the Holocaust, they had forced workers here. Uh, at the beginning, there were Jewish uh, forced labor, which even, who even um, were not living anymore in their own houses. They were living in the Lager uh, at Hella, and they walked down the hill to come here to work. And after the Jewish workers were gone, other forced workers, uh, forced laborer worked here, there were um, especially women, women coming from Poland, uh, from Russia, from, from Italy and from France uh, also, and um, they were working here for the weapon factory. And did you have the possibility to talk to people from that time? The, um, there were Henny Brenner, for example. Uh, she died uh, last year, but she, she came and visited us and we had the opportunity to interview her and, uh, and listen to her story of a young woman, of a Jewish young woman, um, a Dresden girl who from one day to the other didn't have right, any rights anymore and she, and she had to come here and work uh, doing very fine mechanical work to build up the gear for uh, bombs. And um, in fact for her the bombing of Dresden was uh, freedom, uh, was the beginning of her freedom because from that day on, uh, she didn't have to come work here. And actually, she wouldn't have had to go to work here because she, she had already the ticket for Auschwitz. Wow. That's a dark history for, for such a positive place it is today. It's kind of hard to cope with the fact that this is a very, very uh, dark chapter of the history of this uh, of this of this city or of this state but on the other on the other hand um, it's nice to have 
uh, the opportunity to transform such a space. There was a strong reaction right here to what happened in the war. There was also a trial which took place here in, uh, in, in uh, the Göllewerk, the former Göllewerk, nowadays Zentralwerk, in 1949, and, uh, which was a, a very historical moment. And uh, also the population, um, it was, a, it was, a, it was a, like a Schauprozess. So it was very public, it was very uh, it's a, a symbolic trial and there are pictures of people waiting outside the hall and probably listening to the people talking inside. They were, yeah. And then it became a big printing house. The printing house that produced, they produced a bunch of stuff, they, they, books for the socialist uh, a country, um, like comics, like mosaic, mm -hmm. uh, but also um, they produced for other countries, for Arabian countries, but also for the West. And uh, interestingly, what the people who used to work there told us is that they were supposed not to read what they were printing. <laughs> because it was a uh, secret. They, 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 they shouldn't be informed by the culture from the West. The, there were people, also young people, that used a position in the printing house to produce material which wasn't supposed to be produced in this space, like uh, for the peace movement. The, there was a growing opposition against GDR and the growing militarization. And there was this woman who secretly organized the first demonstrations at Frauenkirche, right? They were preparing Flugblätter, flyers. And these flyers were printed in the house for the first demonstration at Frauenkirche in the 80s. For peace. Wow, that that's interesting. Yeah, you see, also in this, it was dictatorship, uh, even after 1945, but uh, it was a long time, like 40 years of social dictatorship, and a lot of a lot of things happened, and people were born in that time and had to cope with the situation that were not part of and. And um, it's, very, it's very interesting to talk to these people, too. Oh, yes, I believe that. Okay, but back to now. What is it like to keep a place like this together? I mean, it's, um, first of all, it's, it's, it's a lot of work. And at the beginning, it will, yeah, I, I mean, the enthusiasm was a very important energy for the beginning and uh, of course at some point it's too much uh, and in the end we are totally happy of having done this it, it, um, I mean the fact that we pay our rent and we don't pay a rent to someone who's speculating with uh, with the ground but we are giving the money to pay back this house which will stay an atelier house for cultural work and self-determined living for hundred years. I think it's, this is this is really a good. Yeah, um, yeah. It just makes sense. Sure. <laughs> it just makes sense. Thank you for this great right. work, and of course, thank you for that interview. Thank you so much.